So uh, we're one after the half hour here uh, and people jumping in has slowed down a bit. So uh, appreciate everyone uh, for hopping on uh, today's conversation and appreciate to Greg at uh, 1623 Farnham uh, for hosting Megaport today. Uh, you know, we're, we're excited, uh, you know, for the opportunity to be talking to everyone on today's call uh, to present, uh, you know, a modern approach to connectivity uh, with Megaport. Um, so for today, before we actually hop in uh, to today's conversation, you know, Greg's going to talk a little bit here uh, to kick things off and then officially hand the torch over to myself, Adam uh, Workus from Megaport. Uh, and then uh, we can join the conversation. And as we go about uh, today's talk, I know uh, just for simplicity's sake, uh, I get, ask everyone just to remain on mute here. And if you have any questions, just chat the questions uh, in the chat screen. And uh, Greg will be looking out uh, as part of the conversation here and stopping me as questions pop up. But with that said, I'll let Greg, I'll let you uh, speak some words and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> right, sounds good. Well, thank you all for investing your time this afternoon to join us. Um, it's, you know, Adam took me through the presentation and it's, there's something for everybody in, in here. So I just wanted to touch base about 1623 briefly in my, my counterpart, uh, part, uh, Lynn Gowan's on as well. So uh, Lynn, I'll just, I'll just say a few words about 1623. If you want to add anything else, um, feel free. Uh, but 1623, for those of you that don't know, is the de facto carrier hotel for Omaha, Nebraska. And over the years, um, long haul fiber, mid middle mile fiber, metro fiber, uh, organically aggregated at the facility. And then a couple years ago, uh, the, the Burks Group uh, recognized that and the value of that and, and acquired 1623. And over the last couple of years have been adding, um, has, have added about $40 million uh, in investment to the building. Uh, and that includes things like new power infrastructure, new cooling infrastructure, uh, new, new fiber vaults, all these, these things to be the, uh, a cutting edge data center. So we're not only a cutting edge data center, we're, we're a carriage hotel as well. And the other good news is that there is um, all kinds of new fiber activity going on um, in the region, uh, both uh, new long haul build, which will be announced here soon, uh, coming from Chicago through Des Moines, through Omaha, through us, and then on to Denver. Uh, so that's great. There's a lot of Metro fiber builds for our neighbors, uh, our hyperscaler neighbors. Uh, Google Cloud has one of their main North American data centers uh, very close to us, as well as Facebook has uh, some, some massive data centers. And then over in, in Iowa, there's Apple and Microsoft and Facebook has another data center. So, so all that coupled with our location right in the middle of the US is, is great. Um, and then as far as the building, we have uh, 75,000 leasable square feet, uh, data center space. Uh, we can do cabinet by cabinet, colo, private cage. Uh, very flexible on how we approach business, and it's it's great to be a part of of this team. Um, and then the other thing I'll add, um, and then and then Lynn, if you want to add anything too, that's that's great. But the the thing that sets us apart from any other data center is our meet me room. And Lynn and and team have been building that meet me room um, for for years and we have 45 carriers and ISPs that have physical fiber presence on our third floor meet me room. And we're really trying to create a fertile environment ecosystem for our carriers and, and ISPs enterprise content to interconnect in a safe and, and cost effective manner. Uh, we also have the Omaha IX, the peering exchange, uh, which is another amenity and then uh, our newest newer tenant um, partner customer is Megaport, um, which which we're excited to to uh, hear hear all about it. So, Lynn, if you if you want to add anything, feel free. And um, I think just to expand a little bit, um, you know, well, we think at sixteen twenty three Farnham, we're the premier edge interconnect data center facility, driving digital transformation across a multi state region. Most, much of it based on low latency connectivity 
And it really allows that digital edge to get pushed out as close to where business is happening, where data is being created as possible. And as Greg mentioned, uh, you know, one of the things we're most proud of is the direct connection we have with the Google Cloud platform over in Council Bluffs at US Central One region. Uh, that's a one millisecond round trip latency connection over there. So, um, you know, it, it affords us a great advantage as far as being able to serve our customers in this market. Um, you know, with the 45 roughly carriers that we have, with facility-based carriers we have in our building, uh, they bring in approximately 18,000 fibers that terminate into the building, allowing us a great deal of diversity as far as the connectivity that we can offer to our customers and partners. And from a partner perspective, those 45 carriers give us reach into Nebraska and Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, North and South Dakota, Colorado, Kansas, and Missouri. So we cover the whole upper Midwest uh, from a connectivity perspective all out of our facility. And we continue to add new connections or carriers uh, as the days and years go by. Within the last year, we've added Telia, a new route between Omaha and Chicago. Unity's brought in some new fiber. A regional uh, fiber provider, Turnkey Telecom, has also uh, become facility-based in our, into our building, as well as Kansas Fiber Network and Vario Fiber. So, um, you know, again, we continue to add and build the value that 1623 brings to people in this area, in this market. Greg, I'll turn it back over to you and Adam. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Len. And without further ado, uh, Adam with Megaport's gonna share, share his knowledge and educate us on, on all things Megaport. So thank you, Adam. We really uh, appreciate Yeah, you're, you're welcome. And uh, to echo Greg, appreciate everyone's time uh, today. I know asking for uh, time on a Tuesday afternoon can be tough for people to carve out. So appreciate yeah, yeah, humoring us uh, you know, for, for this conversation. So to give you a little background uh, to myself before we hop in. So I am a, a regional Megaport uh, representative uh, for the Midwest here. So I'm actually out of Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. So I, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll work with our partners that we've established across the marketplace, you know, whether that be data center partners like 1623 Farnham, uh, it could be network partners that we have uh, within our ecosystem, you know, all the way to managed service providers, help educate them on the offering that we have in Megaport, just to start to uh, understand what we can do and the value that we can provide to an end enterprise by working together on solutions. <clears throat> so what really excited us about the relationship with 1623 Farnham, uh, you know, as Greg and Lynn kind of elaborated on, you know, their organization, you know, as a data center understands that, yeah, they, they may sell space and, and, and power uh, as inherently with colo space that goes into it, but they understand the importance of connectivity uh, that takes place there that uh, the value to an organization is what extends beyond those four walls uh, and the, the places that they have to get to from an inter, inter uh, <laughs> infrastructure perspective, excuse me there. Uh, so today to kick off the conversation, I really want to start there uh, of trends that we're actually seeing within the Midwest uh, here around infrastructure and then around nationally in the United States uh, here. Because when you start to look at what Megaport's providing is we're really a network as a service solution that allows someone to extend their reach uh, to the specific infrastructure uh, partner they want to get to or to the particular region of the country uh, or, or the world uh, that they're looking to, to branch out to. So when we start to think of in infrastructure and, and as, as it sits here uh, in 2020, uh, I think the, the most important thing that's been affecting everyone's life, the reason why uh, you see these lovely sports players behind me and me presenting from my home office here, uh, you know, is obviously due to the pandemic and the changes that that uh, has caused uh, for an organization uh, for it. So when you start to look, you know, at Flexterra's 2020 State of the Cloud report, you know, what we're seeing, uh, you know, because of that, we're seeing more organizations uh, start conversations or further engage in conversations on their individual cloud journeys uh, from there. So when you start to peel back in the conversations that we're having with enterprises that sit within the marketplace here, it's about 59% of them expect their cloud usage to exceed the prior expectations uh, you know, for 20 uh, and 2021 uh, from that standpoint. And with that, they're starting to get to more sophisticated models of infrastructure strategies. So we're seeing organizations, about 87% of them, 
you know, are using some sort of hybrid strategy. So they're, they're leveraging a, a colo space or, or private cloud solution uh, and, and teaming that with public cloud, you know, in, in some sort of way that that's sitting out there because they're trying to figure out what is the best resources to have on their side that help enable their company to offer the appropriate services to their customer and then empower the uh, various professionals that sit within their business organization. And then from that as well, uh, those sophisticated strategy, we're seeing about 93% of these enterprises are using a multi-cloud strategy uh, you know, from that standpoint. So they're either uh, making the decision that a certain workload uh, or data sits better in a specific cloud provider uh, from that standpoint. So it may be media sitting within uh, Google or it may be data sitting within Oracle Cloud, you know, for certain, certain reasons. Or uh, it could be the idea that as software as a service has become more popular, uh, organizations are now starting to use, uh, you know, very SaaS solutions out there that have their own specific cloud solution that they're hosting their application in that an organization is looking to tap into to access those resources and data back and forth. So that's where we're getting the 90, uh, you know, 3% number, number goes. So when you start to look at these trends uh, as more organizations are having these conversations around the cloud uh, and actually adopting cloud right now, uh, there becomes this issue that an organization doesn't necessarily uh, dive into as deep with it because they look at at the front end here that cloud is this great uh, resource from a flexibility and agility standpoint. Uh, and from a cost perspective, it may look quite advantageous, but then when you start to peel back the onion and you figure out the cost of actually pulling data from that cloud solution, it can somewhat cause issues with an organization's budget uh, from that standpoint. So what we're also finding on the flip side of this is that the average organization uh, is about 23% over budget uh, or 23% over budget uh, from what they thought their cloud uh, spend would be uh, for it. So they're really having this hard time as more resources pull into cloud environments, uh, controlling the cost from that standpoint. And then 47% of them expect their cloud spend only to increase uh, in the upcoming next five years uh, for it. So you have this dichotomy of, hey, I'm already overspending, but I'm going to throw more cash uh, into, uh, you know, these type solutions. So when you start to look at the conversations that a lot of organizations are having right now, especially in this COVID environment uh, with it, is like, how can you optimize the spend that uh, I have uh, as far as the adoption goes uh, for within your organization or just the overall cloud spend uh, in general. And right now that's about 73% of all enterprises. Uh, that is their number one concern, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to cloud uh, and infrastructure right now uh, with it. So the question that a lot of you guys are probably asking yourselves right now is, okay, uh, you're, you're from Megaport, you're you know, network as a service solution. So how does networking play a role in this? So let, let's just dive a little bit deeper into that. So say I am an enterprise that's sitting out there, ABC company. Uh, if I'm looking to connect into the various infrastructure that I have as a business, uh, what I'm gonna be doing uh, that it may be, I may have infrastructure that's sitting in cloud service providers. They may be in a colo space or a data center. They may be solution partners that sit out there like SaaS infrastructure as a service pass uh, type offerings that sit there. You know, the traditional connectivity options that are available to me, uh, you know, in this case are going to be either internet or VPN uh, as part of that or dedicated circuits. Uh, when I'm trying to establish that connectivity. But a lot of times, uh, you know, what is unforeseen with these traditional connectivity options uh, that are in place is unless it's like biz mission critical uh, for your business, you may be foregoing the reliability standpoint for this uh, by connect using internet versus a direct circuit 
to connect into certain providers uh, that are from there. So you're delicately balancing these pros and cons that sit within an organization as you're dealing with uh, more streamlined carriers uh, with, within your marketplace or outside of your marketplace with it. So when you start to think of like these negative effects of what we're seeing uh, from the traditional connectivity model is one, uh, if you look at the first option where you're looking to connect over the internet to non-critical workloads or data uh, from that standpoint, you know, it's very advantageous from a pricing standpoint uh, with it. It's very easy to, to shift up the bandwidth that you need with it. The lead times are very short from that. But when you start to think of it from a reliability standpoint with it, the, the bandwidth can be variable. You're, you may not maximize the bandwidth that you're actually paying for within that network. Uh, if you're using a shared internet resource, a public internet, uh, you're maybe sharing that with other organizations within your area. Or if you're doing more of a dedicated uh, internet access, you may be sharing that with other bits and pieces within your own organization. Uh, where you're fighting that connectivity battle uh, with the resources to establish that fixed amount of capacity that you need uh, to be able to connect into that. And then with it, it's not easily scalable. Uh, I can't just go in there and be like, okay, you know, I'm trying to connect into Azure here. I need another 100 megs of connectivity to it. Uh, you know, I can up that from the Azure or the AWS or Azure end uh, from the cloud providers end to it. But if it actually gets transferred from the internet, uh, you know, that is not a one-to-one -one situation there. It may not happen. So again, what you're seeing there is these non-strategic workloads uh, being used here. But then where the real negative effects come is like trying to just layer direct circuit after direct circuit. Because what organizations do as they're trying to control their cost uh, with it is, you know, again, it's that checks and balances of like, can I afford it? Is it worth it? Type decisions that are being made uh, out to these infrastructures. When you start to look at these dedicated circuits, they're high upfront costs uh, with it. There's fixed pricing models. You may be paying for a, a, a 10 gig circuit and the capacity or the bandwidth over that 10 gig circuit, but you may be only using 100 megs uh, of that actual 10 gig circuit that you have in there. There's long lead times affecting your ability to accomplish different projects that sit out there. And then also with it, you're, you're signing up for multi-year contracts uh, that take place. So what I always try to explain this as is like these enterprises get stuck in uh, with these projects as operating at the speed of their vendor versus operating at the speed of their business. So they're continually having to either make decisions three months early or <laughs> having to delay uh, short-term projects a certain amount of days, you know, as they try to figure out uh, connectivity from this option, uh, you know, via traditional vendors. So what Megaport, you know, has really done, and as we're starting to see as software-defined networks are becoming a bigger thing uh, within the marketplace uh, for it, you're starting to see providers like Megaport, uh, where we basically have procured fiber uh, working with different network service providers uh, across the globe where we own the fiber and we build a network uh, that's interconnected across the mesh network that we're allowing someone then to tap into via our portal uh, and different equipment to get instantaneous access to an ecosystem of partners that we have living within, within that network as a service uh, uh, tool. Uh, so when you start to think of it, like from our perspective, uh, you know, we're the one of the first network as a service businesses that popped onto the marketplace. So we, we actually boast the largest uh, ecosystem of partners uh, that, that sit across here. So if you think about it, we have about 100 plus uh, data center operators that we work with across 600 facilities across the globe uh, right now. So if you think of like 1623 Farnham, like you'd then be able to extend your reach to any other data center that sits within our marketplace, regardless of the vendor uh, from that standpoint by riding our network. So basically it is empowering organizations to kind of take this liquid infrastructure strategy where they choose from market to market the best to breed uh, infrastructure that they're looking to have in place. And then with that is giving access to these cloud on ramps that, that sit within the local region uh, to what someone's trying to tap into. So we've got about 200 of them uh, available across 100 plus cloud regions, and then also making it available via our ecosystem uh, when partners want to 
uh, being available via our marketplace. So about 350 plus solution partners that sit, uh, uh, sit there across IX, you know, all the way to SaaS, voice IP, you know, infrastructure as a service. So it's really providing an organization quick access uh, to the infrastructure that they need uh, from that standpoint to start speeding up the level of decisions that they make uh, for their organization to basically put data and workloads wherever they need to be uh, and then have private, private and secure access to that point uh, with it. So if we look at like our customer base, uh, you know, generally what we're seeing across that con customer base is uh, you know, generally these four models of pe how people are looking to have interconnectivity for it. You know, the most simplest is from a DC to DC uh, standpoint with it. So it could be, uh, you know, connecting uh, 1623 uh, Farnham out to Cavern uh, in Kansas City. Normally, if you would want to do that, you'd procure that circuit. Uh, you know, you, you would eat all that cost uh, on a monthly basis to it. And then the bandwidth that you're sending across to it. Well, within our private network, it's already connected uh, from that from that standpoint. Uh, you know, to, to make that decision in a minute versus you know trying to make it more of a strategic decision that that it has to necessarily be uh, from that standpoint. And then also with it is then out the cloud connectivity uh, to various cloud providers. So uh, you know what we're seeing in the Midwest, uh, you know, which is echoed across the globe right now. The the biggest cloud providers that people are using are Azure. Uh, and Microsoft, uh, Google is slowly but surely crawling up uh, further on those rankings. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit about what their strategy is <laughs> in, in a bit here. But here is just providing connectivity from your on-prem or colo spaces out to the various cloud service providers or to those SaaS solutions that are sitting in various uh, clouds uh, that you may be working with. And then uh, again is the hybrid type strategy. So uh, what we're able to do here at Megaport is because we have built this network is uh, is basically allow someone to stand up virtual routers on our network uh, in certain places to basically be able to peer data across two cloud providers uh, on the edge of our network so you can reduce latency and improve performance. Uh, so if I'm you know, if I'm Google uh, and where Google's approach to selling uh, from what I'm seeing is they're, they're selling more of a holistic approach of being like, hey, use Google for what Google's good at, but you can keep using AWS or Azure uh, for what they're good at or what you think they're good at from that standpoint, but give us a try on this, this, this use case that sits out there. So in essence, what we would be able to do is pair those two cloud services on the edge of our network. Uh, so instead of, uh, tromboning back to a data center, uh, which is the normal case here, and then pushing back to that cloud provider. They're basically doing that at the edge of our network uh, to go from there. And then with that, uh, we can actually stand that solution up alone uh, for it. So if you're looking to make a decision, uh, like some of the larger enterprises that I'm dealing with uh, from this standpoint, I had one that's in the Chicagoland marketplace, uh, they're getting a lot of pressure from their customer base because they're in the transportation industry to pull their resources out of AWS. Because uh, AWS is uh, considered a conflict of interest there uh, from a competitive standpoint. So basically what they're doing is they're standing up this cloud router on the edge of our network versus building a VPN uh, over the internet to connect uh, those two cloud providers and transitioning that data back to Google uh, from there. Uh, with it. So again, it's, it's allowing people to make these quick decisions around connectivity that takes place there. Uh, and again, like just expand further on some of the use cases that we're seeing uh, with it is, uh, you know, just around cloud connectivity, uh, data center interconnection, uh, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud type strategy. But then also what I didn't mention here is decisions around this redundancy and backup, uh, short-term traffic needs around different projects that they're doing and uh, B2B exchanges. So when you start to think of like the software defined network uh, that we're offering and what software defined networks basically just offer in general uh, from that standpoint, it's really allowing an enterprise and an organization to make the decision of how much, uh, how much connectivity do I need uh, for each one of the partners that I'm trying to reach out to or each one of the initiatives uh, that I'm trying to do 
as an organization here and allowing them to define that uh, uh, and spin up that connectivity quick uh, within a pre-built network that's sitting across the globe uh, here. So where it really helps then is this lever uh, from a cost standpoint for an organization to go back to the point of uh, how I kicked things off, these concerned about cloud cost. It then plays into that really well because you're able to then not have to purchase these circuits out directly uh, to get reliable connectivity out to uh, these cloud service providers. Uh, you're renting, in essence, uh, space on a pre-built network that takes place there. So the cost of the services can be lower uh, because they're already in place and you're opening up virtual connections versus actual physical connections from point A to point B. The provisioning time uh, you know, speeds up from days, uh, two days versus uh, weeks and months from that standpoint. And then from that, you get those software defined capabilities with the portal that overlays on these type of networks where you can right size the capacity that you need uh, for all the decisions that you're trying to make. So if for, for one week you need to increase your, you need to increase your, your connectivity, you know, hundred megs, you'd be able to do that, peel it back down to, you know, the original, uh, original amount uh, once you were done with that. And then also with this is giving people the ability to build one to many relationships uh, uh, to across these circuits. So instead of, uh, you know, purchasing a circuit that, you know, maybe only used uh, to connect into Azure, uh, you know, with a one-to-one -one type relationship, being able to have access to that 10 gig circuit, but within that being able to cut that up a hundred different ways uh, if needed to connect into the various pieces uh, of infrastructure that you're looking to connect into uh, for it. And then the final, final piece with it of, you know, the reason why I actually came to Megaport and why I love uh, software defined networks just in general is I actually used to work at Oracle uh, before I, before I joined Megaport. Uh, and one of the things that I noticed when I was helping customers migrate to the cloud is there would always be that moment of where the project or the decisions that they were made uh, being made was was being held hostage to a degree by the connectivity decisions that they were trying to make internally because they knew they either had to plan those weeks or months ahead. But where a software defined thing really attracted me, and I'll show you this when I actually hop into the platform here of how connectivity is done with Megaport. Like if you can speed that up to a minute uh, and make those real time decisions, and you can put that decision back into the speed and the velocity that an organization uh, and an enterprise wants to run at, they can just start peeling off at the speed of their own business versus, you know, kind of what we get stuck in right now with traditional connectivity, where you're almost moving again at the speed of the vendor and making your choices less around the enterprise, but more along the network that, that is available to you uh, from, from that particular provider that takes place there. So when you start to then look at the value that software defined networks are really providing people, uh, you know, like Megaport that sit out there, you know, one, it's a sense of security uh, that, that, whoops, uh, that takes place there because you are in essence pulling uh, workloads and data off public internet uh, in certain cases here to a private network infrastructure uh, from that standpoint. And in our cases, uh, you know, where ISO 2701 certification is being approved right now. So there's certain risk prevention uh, that's in place from that standpoint. It's a reliability piece there because you're able to define specific capacity that you'd be using uh, within a circuit that you have there. You can always uh, cancel out any noise that would take place uh, via a VPN or internet connectivity. And then with this compared to, uh, you know, direct circuits, uh, our, a network like these are, are mainly mesh networks. So there's redundancies pre-built into the network that takes place there. So for some reason, a circuit gets cut at somewhere between point A and point B, there's a secondary path that this network will automatically kick into uh, to help you get from point A to point B and ensure that workload takes place uh, from that standpoint. And then finally, uh, the last four that I have here, you know, is from a scalability standpoint. So that's pretty easy because you're just able to make those decisions in real time. Again, 
and being able to spin those up in a matter of minutes uh, and make choices that are best for your business versus what's available to you from a network perspective. And then from an ecosystem uh, piece here is just connecting into uh, resources uh, from other, other organizations. So when we think about ecosystem where we're actually seeing a lot of people, uh, organizations go to Megaport, uh, are, are a lot of times in healthcare and finance uh, because we have been able to onboard quite a bit of solution partners who sit within those industries. So really building these micro ecosystems uh, within our larger ecosystems. So people can just basically have these private networks passing data back and forth and resources back and forth without the fear of you know, exposure uh, you know, in, in certain degrees. But uh, with that being said, um, you know, it also plays well with other markets uh, since we have access to Salesforce, SAP, you know, and then Oracle resources for peering. You know, a lot of times it could be a great way from a manufacturing standpoint uh, to connect into uh, a cloud version of your uh, ERP solution uh, from that standpoint. And you start to look at these ERP solutions that sit within the marketplace like Oracle, uh, Oracle with NetSuite and then Oracle uh, their, their, their main brand and then also SAP, a lot of those organizations are going to start pushing uh, uh, manufacturers or people who use their ERP solutions to the cloud at a certain point in time anyway uh, to make connectivity a larger issue within those accounts. Uh, and then also with that is from a spend optimization standpoint, controlling the budget of what you're connecting into. And then finally, uh, it's the idea of future proofing um, you know, your business here. Because, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of people, if you're sitting within, uh, you know, the six, 1623 Farnham uh, building, you've obviously made probably the decision that you used to have digital infrastructure or infrastructure that sat on premise some sort of way, and you decided to move that into a colo presence uh, of some sort, because you were making that decision of converting something from uh, op from CapEx to an OpEx standpoint. Well, it's really what network as a service is doing as well. Uh, you know, we're owning the network, you're owning everything that goes across it uh, from that standpoint. So when all the decisions have to be made of, as far as upgrading the network and maintenance on the network, it's falling into that network as a service provider's hands like we do. And then uh, there's always there's a reach that's working on your behalf to extend the partnerships that take place. So like in our case, uh, you know, we just added SunGuard as a uh, potential colo partner uh, from that standpoint. So extending the reach from the 1623 Farnham location out to SunGuard uh, data centers that sit across the United States and a few of them that, that, that sit across the, the European landscape. Then also, uh, you know, partnering with Cisco because what we're hearing is a lot of organizations uh, you know, their top four demands that sit out there. You know, obviously we talked about cloud connectivity as being number one. You know, number two then from there is security. Well, we hit at that, that piece with it. Uh, a number, number three then is SD-WAN uh, with that. So looking at the wide area networks that takes place there. So we actually partnered uh, with, with Cisco uh, to basically make our network available uh, to SD-WAN uh, uh, organizations so they can connect to the end resources that sit within our ecosystem and help them do edge uh, networking and edge computing, you know, within, um, you know, our gl global ecosystem that, that takes place there uh, for it. And then finally, the last piece there would be use cast if you're looking at those four. And that's really tied into the ecosystem partners that we have here. But with that said, uh, what I'll actually do to, is shift focus uh, more into how the software defined network that Megaport has in place, how it actually works and how it could be set up within the 1623 Farnham uh, location. So when we start to think about Megaport and putting the control at your fingertips, you know, it really starts with the idea of the portal that we have in place. So I'll hop into this uh, a little bit deeper in a second or two here. But basically, after someone procures a mega port uh, on our uh, portal, what they can do from there is they basically, within three minutes, produce the LOA that they can hand off to the 1623 Farnham uh, partners that they have. 
and then from there take a physical cross connection from their equipment uh, into Megaport. Once that's done, uh, in about a minute or two, uh, it, they can start spinning up those connections uh, you know, out to the resources. So again, it could be those 100 plus unique data center operators that we have across the globe, uh, or uh, it could be to our internet exchange uh, with it. So in several key markets, uh, we actually have internet exchanges that sit within our um, uh, within our ecosystem that someone can build a virtual cross connection out to uh, with it. So basically allow you to do internet peering uh, if you're looking to take certain things that you use a lot, like let's say Google Suite off offline or into more of a private uh, internet exchange type uh, solution. And then from there, connect into the various cloud service providers. So again, we boast the largest uh, availability of those cloud service providers of any network as a service solution uh, or, or even carrier that sits out there where we have access to 218 total on ramps and then 120 uh, cloud regions uh, across all these major providers, whether down it's AWS, Azure, uh, Google, Oracle, SAP, Salesforce, Rackspace, uh, Nutanix, uh, OBH, IBM, Cloudflare, or Alibaba. You know, there's ability to provide connectivity uh, to the most localist region uh, for those organ organizations that sit out there. And then other areas that we can connect into uh, directly from Megaport then are, uh, again, are that marketplace of organizations that we have here across, uh, you know, maybe network services, uh, data centers, or voice IP. I know on this call here, we have a bunch of uh, network partners uh, from 1623 Farnham. So how we actually work with uh, network uh, solution providers that sit out there, we actually have a lot of them who join our, who buy a port with us to join our marketplace <laughs> for it. So basically extending the reach of their network services that take place, leveraging our network to expand them into different markets that they may not have access to, but an organization, once they get into the Omaha area, uh, or Kansas area or, or you know, wherever will then want to leverage their, their connectivity that they're offering out to the various resources that, that they have uh, on their own networks that take place there. And then finally, uh, there's that multi-cloud solution that I kind of mentioned before for uh, cloud to cloud peering uh, that takes place. But with that being said, uh, what I'll actually do here is I'll hop into the Megaport portal here a uh, cool thing about the Megaport portal, uh, this can actually be set up in five minutes. Uh, it's free for anyone to you know, set up a portal account for it. So there's no charge for the portal account if you wanted to check things out, uh, you know, no risk there. But once I'm ready to establish connectivity uh, from the 1623 Farnham building, all I need to do is create a port here. Uh, I can then see that it's actually the first one that pops up, second one that pops up for me. I can select 1623 Farnham Data Center, click next here. Uh, from here, I can make the decision on the capacity I want from the port that I'm purchasing. So when you start to think of capacity, uh, I always tell that that's the whole of the pipe that we're extending within our network. So you really have two options here. You could either do one gig or a 10 gig. Uh, if you notice here, uh, where, where we list pricing, the price does not change uh, for either the one or a 10 gig uh, here. So if there's the case that you think you are going to expand to the need of a 10 gig in the future, I always recommend an organization just to open the 10 gig uh, with it. But you could always make that switch, uh, you know, if needed uh, at any point in the future. Then I can just name this. So I'll do, I'll just do my initials here, demo. Uh, I will have then the decision to make if I want to make this marketplace visible or not. So if I make it visible, I can then fill out a marketplace profile uh, to make my services available uh, via uh, the Megaport marketplace. And uh, if you do that, uh, it's not like it's carte blanche for someone just to connect into your system. Uh, how it works there is someone then would submit a request to virtually cross connect uh, into your system um, and then uh, auto prompt uh, a decision on your end to create a key code for them to be able to connect into those resources. Uh, and it works exactly the same way uh, from a private version here. You can still 
you know, provide that key code access uh, into your resources. But the key difference is that would be a one-off, one-to-one conversation that you have with your customer base uh, about connectivity from, from that standpoint here. Uh, and as far as terms go, uh, our lowest term is month to month here. So I'm gonna, I recommend people just to keep it monthly from a flexibility standpoint. But if I go either 12 months uh, to 36 months uh, here, there's a short, small discount of 5% on a one year. And then on a three year, it's a, uh, it's a 10% discount that takes place there. I can enter in a PO number here. I can make the decision to decide to leg together uh, multiple ports. So I can leg the up to, I can leg up to 10, uh, I can leg eight 10 gig ports together uh, as part of this. So for some reason I needed to get to 80 gigs of capacity, I would be able to make that decision that takes place here. I will just click through this. I will add this port, uh, click order here. And what, uh, I will accept the terms here uh, on this. And what really differentiates our, ourselves from other uh, providers that sit out there is the software defined network is doing all the provisioning here. So it's looking at our equipment that sits within the 1623 Barnum uh, building and it's generating the LO, uh, the LOA from that, uh, uh, from that standpoint. So it takes about three minutes here uh, from spot uh, what I'll do here uh, as we wait to it, and I'll go back to that, is I'll actually just set up the connectivity to AWS uh, to show you how quickly connectivity can be established from a port. Oh, I'll do that in a second here. <laughs> the LOA already produced. Uh, we're a little bit fast today uh, from that standpoint. So yeah, as you see here, it produces the, the letter of uh, authorization that you'd hand off to the 1623 Farnham group here. Uh, basically, it lists who this is issued by, uh, again, uh, the demarcation uh, of where we sit within the particular data center uh, that's taking place there. Uh, so they can basically set up that cross connect uh, to, for you. I know generally uh, it takes anywhere from three to five days to have that cross connection uh, put in place uh, from that standpoint. And the actual charges for the cross connection then uh, would be charged uh, directly from the data center uh, from that standpoint. Uh, but with that said, I will uh, hook up to AWS here. So I'll click AWS. I will have the decision to either use a hosted VIF model or a hosted connection uh, for it. So the main difference uh, as I describe it for an organization between these two options is uh, hosted VIF is really, I'm gonna say a revolving door for an organization. So multiple people can have access to the, the hosted VIF model. Uh, and it's first come first serve of who goes into AWS first uh, here. Uh, in this case, uh, because it's a shared resource, Megaport actually pays for the port fee on AWS's sign for an organization uh, to have access to it uh, from it. And then the uh, increments that you'd able to do from a connectivity standpoint would be anywhere from one meg, you know, up to five gigs uh, to that model. If you're looking more for, I wanna have my own dedicated door uh, VIP door that I can walk into at any given point in time, uh, I would recommend the hosted connection here uh, for it. So I'll actually build a hosted connection uh, here and I'm gonna pick uh, the United States as my marketplace here. And as you can see here, it pulls up all the available options uh, that we have to connect into AWS. So uh, let's just say here, uh, let's just say here, let's go to Chicago with this. So I will pick Chicago. Uh, I will then go to next and then I can name this. So I'll just call this HEW demo, A whoops, AWS. Uh, again, I could add the PO number here. I will establish a uh, hundred megs of connectivity out here. Um, I can then issue the VLAN uh, tagging that I want to have on here. So basically, Basically, you have the option of having this auto assigned uh, via Megaport, or if there's a particular uh, VLAN uh, number that you have that sits within your own physical equipment, uh, you can define that here and use that instead of the auto defined one. From here, I can then just copy in my AWS ID, click next, add the VXC here. As you see, this is a uh, $121 uh, to be able to do that. I will order it accept the terms here. 
So again, like the software defined portion of our network then is now working with our uh, integration that we have directly with AWS to procure uh, the, the 100 meg connection here. Uh, what I can also see here is that this is 1% of my 10 gig uh, port here. So I have 99% capacity left uh, within this particular circuit that we're, we have uh, and we're using here. And if I hop into my AWS uh, portal here or console here, uh, in about a minute here, uh, I should be able to see uh, this connection established. Okay, uh, right here. So you can see I just created that AGW demo AWS uh, into Chicago here, 100 megs. Uh, it's on the ordering piece. I just click into here. I hit accept here, and then I can start building uh, from my I can start building out those BGP sessions or VIT sessions uh, that I would do once I accept it from here. I'm gonna delete this because I racked up a pretty large bill because I forgot to delete stuff the last time I was hopped in here uh, from that standpoint. And if I wanna open up connectivity to other places uh, for it, I can just click that plus sign. Uh, you know, I can you know, hook up with any other cloud provider that I would potentially need to, uh, to use that 99% capacity I could look the private connect into, say, another uh, another port that I have with another data center provider on Megaport. So if I had a, a port that's sitting in the Cavern building uh, with Megaport, I could connect those two together. Uh, I could connect to an internet exchange uh, that would sit within our marketplace, one of our marketplaces. I can actually come in here, connect to a, a marketplace partner here. So one of the use cases that I'm actually seeing a lot. Uh, with now uh, is uh, private connectivity requests into Ring Central uh, from that standpoint. So if that's the case uh, for any of the customers on the call today, uh, if you're looking to be valued from a reliable private connection, uh, you know, into uh, Ring Central, you'd be then able to choose where you get your resources from. So in your case, probably do Chicago. I would click here. Uh, and once I hit next here, I would be able to define the speed that I want here but it would also send that key code out to Ring Central, So I will not uh, bother them today uh, as far as that goes. Or if I had a, a key code from a partner who's not part of the marketplace, I could enter in that private service key and provide connectivity here. And it would work very similar to uh, how we did with the AWS connectivity here, uh, where it'd take about a minute or so to establish the actual connectivity from point A to point B that takes place here. And if I was ever needed, I've already deleted this piece here, but uh, this connection that sit out there, uh, sits out there, that's why you see the arrow going here. It's a little bit confused uh, from that standpoint. But if I wanted to break this down and bump this up to 150 megs, I would be able to, you know, basically get rid of this one, delete it, uh, you know, from that standpoint, uh, then stand up a new connection, you know, for the 50, 50 megs more that I would want for it. Uh, if I'm connecting actually into Azure, uh, they have more functionality with their APIs uh, to software defined networks like Megaport. So basically I could just change within Megaport that I needed 50 more megs of connectivity out to Azure or uh, one more gig or, or whatever I would need from that standpoint. And it would auto uh, be able to do that uh, on, on uh, Azure's end. And most of the other cloud service providers operate that way versus AWS is just a little bit more trickier uh, from that option. But uh, hopefully uh, you can see just how quick and easy these software defined networks just make these decisions uh, you know, for an organization because it's just really from their understanding the endpoint that someone wants to connect into uh, for it, identifying that within our ecosystem or if they're not part of our ecosystem, uh, it's easy for that organization to get part of it. Cause again, it's just opened up an port from their end from that standpoint of the data center that they're in uh, to be part of our network uh, from that standpoint. So, and once that's done, it's, it's opening up those virtual cross connections or those VLANs out to the partner uh, that you're looking to go to and uh, you know, be able to make those real world decisions uh, uh, from there. And from a pricing standpoint, uh, you know, it's actually pretty economical uh, to make these decisions because, again, we own 
the equipment, we own the network uh, for it. And as a service provider, we're able to spread this cost across a, a large customer base of 1,800 plus customers for it. So uh, the price again for that, that uh, port, uh, that physical port within the data center here uh, would be for a one gig and a 10 gig, it's $500 per month that takes place there. To actually do those virtual cross connections or those VLANs from point A to point B, we allow you to find that from one meg all the way up to 10 gig uh, to be provisioned in those 59 seconds. If it's within a metro, so say that you're going from, you know, a, somewhere in Omaha to another location uh, in Omaha, uh, there, if you're between one meg uh, to one gig, it's a flat fee of $100. Uh, if you're going from uh, one gig up to 10 gig, it's a flat fee of $200 per month. Uh, we actually bill these up to the minute. So if for some reason you wanted to make that real world change, uh, as we discussed, bump it up to 50 megs for it. Uh, you know, we would bill that up to the minute uh, if it's metro, it really doesn't matter unless you're going from one one gig up to like two gigs, uh, for example. Uh, that would be advantageous from that standpoint. Or uh, where it comes more into play if you're doing a long haul. Uh, so say from uh, 1623 Far Farnham up to the Cavern location, if I actually just hop on our website and click into our pricing tool, you can see the cost to go from Omaha to Kansas City here. Uh, for up to 10 speed or 10 gigs on that port here. Uh, one gig then would be for $280 from there. And then I could just scale it up from here. So I can see two gigs then is $460 uh, and all the way down to megs, all the way up to 10 gigs here uh, for it. So you can basically type in any location across our network here uh, to figure out exactly what the cost would be for you. There's certain promotions that uh, we have that I can help with if you contact me direct to see if you qualify for them uh, from that piece. And then from there, uh, you know, the only other cost that would be considered uh, from this standpoint is if you're looking to add additional services for it. So you may want to connect into our IX uh, that's taking place from there um, with it. So that'd just be the cost of the virtual cross connection uh, if it's not an IX that sits within our metro, uh, within that metro here. And then uh, MCR uh, with that. So if you're looking to have that solution that sits between the two cloud providers, that can be set up within uh, 15 minutes where you can manage all the BGP sessions from one location. Uh, you would just choose your capacity here, uh, anywhere from one gig uh, to 10 gigs that, that take place here. And one of the last things that I'll point out as far as a cost structure standpoint go, we, we tried to make this as super simple as possible for any organization with it and be upfront about it. So when you start to think of like a cost standpoint, uh, you're basically ch getting charged for the ports that you have uh, and then for the virtual cross connections that you're building uh, from that standpoint. We're not charging you for any uh, uh, utilization of that particular circuit that you're using uh, from that standpoint. So if you're sending uh, you know, two terabytes worth of data across that uh, one gig connection that you have built, uh, that to us doesn't really matter uh, from that standpoint. You're just paying uh, for the port and then for that virtual cross connection that, that sits out there. So again, um, you know, it's just an option, you know, as far as the software defined purposes go to help an organization with connectivity. So if we start to pivot back of uh, organizations that sit out there uh, you know, in the last five minutes here of how we're helping them. I always like to describe Megaport uh, and software defined networks as more of a tactical decision that an organization uh, is making. And I call it tactical uh, just because one, it's simple to establish the connectivity with, with software defined networks as you see here, but also with it, uh, you know, if someone needs connectivity from point A to point B, they're going to figure out a way to get connectivity from point A to point B. You know, whether or not they're giving up performance in that case or, you know, making the decision to, to allocate more spend to towards it, like they can always, you know, they'll make that decision, you know, as they need to as a business standpoint. But basically what Megaport's doing is, you know, being a tactical option for that, a low risk option that can be done with that. But then on the flip side of that, allowing an organization just to operate more strategically because they're able to get faster outcomes that they're looking to from an IT project standpoint that they have out there. Uh, and then with that, in turn, provide the value to the end customer or um, 
the department that had the request in the first place. So if you start to look at uh, you know, these, these examples that I have here, and you can look at them when I send the deck and the recording out uh, from this standpoint. But, you know, when COVID hit, uh, one, of the, one of our top customers in my marketplace, Minnesota, uh, was a private uh, for-profit university. Uh, you know, and being a for-profit university, they're always looking at, okay, what's the value I'm providing to my student base? So when COVID hit and people started shutting down uh, with it and you had uh, the orders to stay at home with it, you know, their business model got flipped on its head. Uh, from that standpoint. And they were looking then, how do I offer a remote education uh, to our customer base that sit out there, uh, those students uh, for it. So where they were looking is running Citrix uh, in the cloud in some sort of way. So they had previously had run that in their colo space uh, to provide access to teachers who were working remote. Well, they are increasing that traffic a hundred times <laughs> of what, who would access that. So cloud would provide the scalability for it. So they were talking to organizations that are out there of like, you know, different carriers out there, like how quickly could we move with this? And again, it's kind of that story. Well, I can get you up to four weeks to provide that connectivity you know, from carrier or, you know, three months they were getting quoted. Well, they did a random Google search. They, they stumbled upon Megaport and we were able to have them stood up with direct connectivity to AWS uh, within two days uh, by working with the Colo space for it. So they were able to launch their Citrix environment within a week uh, from that standpoint. And midway through, they were actually able to make the decision that they were going to host half of their environment in Azure uh, as part of that, because Azure came in with a super aggressive rate and they're like, hey, might as well uh, to control costs from that standpoint. So they were able to make that decision, a cost decision in the middle of that project and not affect any of the timeline uh, that they were looking to have uh, and basically leverage the same circuit, uh, you know, and connectivity to, to cross out to that. So again, like that's, that's really the strategic decisions that were empowering. But with that said, I know we've got about three minutes here uh, of the allocated time that we have here. So one of the, uh, if there, uh, one of the things I'll open it up for questions here. So if you're running across any questions, Greg, uh, feel, feel free to, to hop in here. Otherwise, uh, one of the things that I'll say again is I, I appreciate everyone's time, but for people who are on this call, uh, you know, Megaport's willing to offer a free month trial uh, or proof of concept of the Megaport platform. Uh, you just have to reach out to myself or Greg. I have our contact information here and we can help uh, go through that discussion. Uh, so, you know, I always describe it, uh, again, as a tactical decision, very limited risk because it can be month to month agreement, uh, you know, and so you could basically stand this up, break this down <laughs> at any given point in time that you want to with it, but it's just one extra incentive just to try us and get more awareness around our product. Uh, any questions that you saw out there, Greg? No, I didn't see any pop up. Just check again. And we are almost out of time. Perfect. Yeah. But thank you, everybody, for joining. We really appreciate it. Adam, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. It's great stuff. I really appreciate it. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And again, I appreciate uh, you setting this up, Greg. Uh, so, you know, as a follow-up, uh, feel free to reach out to Greg or myself with any questions that you have there. Uh, we'll send out this deck here. Uh, it has some great information that we didn't cover today on 1623 Farnham. And then also uh, around the Megaport network, as far as cloud providers and the reach that gets extended there. And uh, again, yeah, any questions that pop up, uh, feel free to reach out and, uh, Hopefully I wasn't too boring for everyone and you guys learned some stuff. <laughs> that was great. Awesome. All right. Thank cool. you, everyone. Yeah, Thank appreciate you, it, everyone. Thanks. Take care. Take care, guys. Thank you.